so let's see, let's see, let's see. What questions do we have in the group? Let me just refresh. I think the lovely Stace posted um, the uh, posted the graphic earlier. There she did. Isn't my designer amazing? Is, isn't like isn't my stuff just so beautifully branded? I have to be like that's not me. That's Alan, my designer. He is my designer developer. He works with us full time, and he well not full time, but nearly full time. Trying to persuade him to come full time. This work is just. Huh. I like worship. I like literally. I'm not worthy. I get down on the ground. I, I worship the ground he walks on. He's amazing. Oh, we have 25 comments, right? Haven't even, 27 comments. Haven't even had a chance to look through these. And it's already 9 or 7.15. So let's get going with the questions. Okay, so here we go. So Kathleen Malik is asking, what is considered high strength L-carnitine and alpha lipoic acid? How much MGs is considered high strength? So really easy question, Kathleen. For high strength, I would say uh, 400 milligrams is usually high strength, but 200 milligrams is usually kind of normal strength. 400 milligrams is high strength. Easy enough. Uh, Faith Slack Wicks is asking, do we take the L-carnitine before the cardio and strength workouts or just before the strength workouts, i.e. once a day or twice a day? That's a really good question. Um, you can, if you were really wanted to, Okay, so there's kind of two answers to this, right? So if you were just doing normal kind of training, right? And you were, say, in my 12-month sculpted vegan program and you were working on building muscle, but you wanted to shred a wee bit of fat at the same time, I would say just take it before your workouts. The reason why I say this is because on my 12-month program, you have 12 months. Actually, you have longer than 12 months because the last phase is 16 weeks. So you have 12 months to sculpt beautiful muscle and you don't need, um, so you wouldn't need to take it before your uh you would need to take it before your cardio. However, L-carnitine um, is one of those amino acids that what it does is whenever you're training, um, your body um, your body calls on two stores of energy in the body um, to, to produce energy to get you through your training. The first store is the glycogen that is in your muscles and the second store is um, fat. So it, basically what it does is it converts fat cells uh, into triglycerides and it transports the triglycerides through the bloodstream and gives them to the, gives them to the muscles for energy. So what L-carnitine does is it basically interrupts the process that causes the muscles to burn out the glycogen in the muscle first because the muscle will always use muscle glycogen first, right? So it causes the muscles to, um, to use more fat stores as energy instead of muscle glycogen. Now, I could go into the science behind it, but really you don't need to know that here. You just want to know, is it best? So in this one, if you really want to accelerate your chances of success, I would say do both. Take it before your cardio. So you don't want to take it three times a day. You could, I mean, you could take it three times a day. L-carnitine is very hard to overdose on. Like it really is one of those ones that's hard to overdose on. So what would I do if I was shredding? Let me think. Well, I'm a really OCD, go for it, hammer and tongs kind of person. So to be honest, I would take L-carnitine three times a day. I would. I would take it um, because it won't do you any harm at all. And if it's not going to do you any harm and it can potentially cause a lot of benefits, why not do it? So I would take it if it were me personally. And there's never any right or wrong answer here. There's only, you know, what we what we think we can do so I would probably take it yes in the morning and then before my cardio I would take it before my my gym workouts and I would take it again before my evening cardio if it were me okay now there's and like I said there's no right or wrong answer here you got to do what works for you but it's very hard to overdose on L-carnitine okay this code just came through and I'm just going to send it to Flora because she's asking for it and she's obviously doing something very important <laughs> she says oh shite I forgot that's cool um, okay, I just sent it to her. Flora is my project manager. You guys have probably met her at some point. She's absolutely amazing. So, um, so yeah, so I would take it three times a day. That's what I would do because you're only on a four week shred and you want to get like the best results you can possibly get. So take it three times a day if you want to, but if you don't want to just before your strength workout is totally fine. Okay. So Cosatron is asking, I do two to three night shifts a month. And so my body clock is sometimes a mess. What advice do you have during these times? Could this impact my results? It's not going to impact your results, no. Um, I think that a lot of times we... I'll tell you a story. I always love to, to make my points with stories. So I remember once whenever I was training years ago with a, um, with a power lifter. I used to power lift when I was in my 20s. So I was training with this power lifter. And I remember one day... Um, remember whenever you were in your 20s and you got your period? Sorry for any guys in the group. And you got your period and you were really like, oh, 
I'm on my period. And, you know, because you'd heard all these things about having your period made you. And I know this is very real for a lot of women, so I'm not saying this way, but you heard all these things that whenever you got your period, you were tired of and you know maybe you were just you didn't have as much energy and whatever and so you kind of just you know you let that that thought kind of permeate your life and I remember turning up to the gym one day to train with my trainer and I said to him you know I've got my period today I probably won't lift, be able to lift as heavy and he was like no way he said during your period you have far more estrogen in your body he said your testosterone levels are higher and you're going to be able to lift heavier and I remember being like oh shit he didn't buy into it <laughs> And it's not even that I was trying to make him buy into it, but what I really wanted him to do was to kind of go, oh, did you get your period? Oh, that's terrible. Don't worry. Sure. Just do what you can and don't worry about it. Really, I just wanted him to like powder my butt and blow a raspberry on my belly, right? So and so a lot of the times, the things that we tell ourselves um, and the stories that we make up on our head aren't always true. Stories like, I work nights, and so therefore, that makes me really, really, really tired the next day which I'm sure it does. I can't, I take my hat off to you. Anyone who works nights has my 100% respect, okay? But just because you're tired doesn't mean that you don't show up and do the work. Does that make sense? Like you could be like, oh, I'm tired, this is gonna mess with my body clock. No, it won't. Even, even if you feel knackered, you feel your body clock's a bit screwed, you show up, you do your cardio, you go to the gym, you just get on with it, okay? So don't let excuses like, I work nights, I, you know, I'm a shift worker, or I have four kids, or I have a baby, and I only got, you know, X amount of hours sleep last night. Will that make you tired? Yes. Will I feel really, really, really sorry for you? Yes. Will I let you off the hook? No. <laughs> and you know why I won't let you off the hook? Because I have shown up and done the really, really, really hard things so many times in my life. Um, I have a friend who is a professional bodybuilder. She's actually in this group. She's one of the admins in this group. She's a category above me. She's like super muscular. And she is a night shift worker, right? So she works nights, I don't know how many days a week, which is actually, she's in palliative care. So she looks after like old people and sick people. And she quite often, when she's prepping for a show, even like when you're prepping for a show, you're dieting, you're low in calories, kind of like you guys are gonna be in the next four weeks. She will come off night shift after having had a really, really hard night shift and she will show up at the gym in the morning, 8 a.m., she'll be there and she will train clients all day and that this is half after coming off night shift, she'll train clients in the gym, then she'll do her own very hard training for an hour and then she'll have some posing clients and then she'll go home and go to bed that evening, right? And do you ever hear her complain? No, not once. I honestly, she, I thought I was strong, right? physically and mentally until I met Emma. And then I realized, holy shit, my life is a breeze in comparison to Emma's. Like, I think I'm, you know, I, it's hard for me to go up and train in the morning if I've only had like six hours sleep instead of eight. Whereas Emma does a full night shift and then gets up in the morning and does a full day's work. So seriously, don't let yourself off the hook. Is it hard doing four week shred? Yes. Angela's saying, this just smashed all of my excuses. It's so true, Angela, whatever. I, I would still go, I'm really tired. And I would sometimes arrive at the gym and I'd be like, Mark, I didn't get very much sleep last night. And he'll be like, see Emma over there, deadlifting 140 kilograms. Emma just came off night shift. And then Emma just trained four people. And now she's training herself. You don't get to talk about being tired. I'm like, okay, point taken. <laughs> like, not tired anymore. Let's go. <laughs> so no excuses. Don't let yourself off the hook. Okay? Just a wee, just a wee mama smack down. Okay? Just a wee mama smack down. Um, so, 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 no, won't mess with your results, Cosatron, is the very long answer to your very short question. Okay, Liga is asking, do we need to take alpha lipoic acid capsules before drinking the protein shake or just before each actual meal? So, uh, this is kind of the same as the earlier question. If you were on um, my 12-month program and you were working on building muscle and sculpting fat and you had a long journey ahead of you, then I would say... No, just take it before you eat. But because you've only got four weeks and because you are going to be training hard and intensely, yes, I would say take it before every single thing that you put in your mouth. Now, not if you just take it, you know, like you're just like, I was going to say, if you're just going to eat like a boiled sweet or something, but you're not going to be eating a boiled sweet on this program. So um, uh, a candy, I think you guys call it in America, we call it sweets. So no, I would take it before, yes, before every meal, before breakfast, before every protein shake, before every lunch. What alpha lipoic acid does is ALA, it's short for, alpha lipoic um, basically opens the GLUT4 receptors on the surface of the muscle. So when you eat, 
your body, it interrupts the receptor. So when you eat and your body, your pancreas secrete insulin. Insulin is a storage hormone. Insulin wants to store the food that you eat very, very quickly. So what it does is it stores it. It opens the GLUT4 receptors on the fat cell and it opens the GLUT4 receptors on the surface of the muscle cell and also stores glycogen in the liver, right? So if you take alpha lipoic acid with your food or just before, 30 minutes before is ideal, what happens is that your body shuttles more of the nutrients into muscle and away from fat store. It's perfect. So your body stores less fat. That's what alpha lipoic acid does. It is one of my best supplements. Again, it is virtually impossible to overdose on alpha lipoic acid. I know a guy who did a shred once and he was taking eight to 10 alpha lipoic capsules a day. I like to take 400 milligrams, um, the high strength ones. Again, especially whenever I'm on an intense period of shredding, you know, this is an intense period. Like all the rules go out the window here, right? It's high strength all the way, high intensity, high, you know, apart from cardio. Cardio is slow steady, but there's a lot of cardio, high intensity workouts, high intensity supplements. You just got to go for it, okay? So you're also asking, um, does it matter how many meals per day you eat as long as you hit your carb and protein goals? Doesn't matter. You can eat 20 times a day if you want. In fact, one of the things that I do whenever I'm shredding for a competition, because, you know, whenever you're dieting, you do get really hungry. So um, just so that I was spreading my meals out, I used to break, I used to split my breakfast and my lunch and my dinner in half. So I, whatever I was having for breakfast, if it was oatmeal, I would have um, half of the oatmeal after my cardio and then I would have the other half at maybe 11. Then at whatever lunch I was having, I would split it in two. I would have half my lunch. Did I want to eat the whole thing? Yes, I was starving, but I didn't. I forced myself to stop halfway and then I saved the rest and I had the rest at maybe three o'clock. Then I would have split my dinner in half. I would have, you know, say half at 5 p.m. and then the other half at maybe 6 or, you know, or 7 or 8 p.m. And then I would have a big protein shake before bed. So quite often having a big protein shake before bed is useful because your body repairs overnight when you're sleeping. You can't get to sleep if you're hungry. So you never ignore hunger. If you're hungry in the evening and you're thinking, oh, I'll be all right, I'll just go to bed because I really can't, can't face any more vegetables, don't, okay? If you try and keep a protein shake for just before bed, so that you're not starving in the evening. Your muscles will repair while you're sleeping as well, so the protein will be good. And try and keep some, you know, some green vegetables to hand. Like, I, I love cold broccoli. Can I tell you, see whenever you squeeze lemon juice and salt on broccoli, it just transforms it into something beautiful. I trust me, okay? It really does. And same with green beans and asparagus. Those are my three go-to vegetables. Green beans, asparagus, which is a really good diuretic, by the way. And, um, and your pea's gonna smell disgusting. Um, and also uh, broccoli. Um, the amount of antioxidants you are going to get from all of this green, these green veg, like you're going to be so healthy after this. You're not. You're going to come out of this feeling like a different person. You have no idea. It's going to be really hard, but you're really going to love it. So um, as many meals a day as you want. Doesn't matter in which order we eat our meals. Like it is also asking. Oh my god! Like you've asked me like <laughs> you've asked like a hundred questions in one. Okay, maybe not a hundred. Like ten in one go. Um, I love that you're so like. On, on it. So what else are you asking? Does it matter in which order we eat our meals? Doesn't matter in the slightest. You just want to make sure that you have your protein after you train. Always, always, always protein after you train. Why? Because your muscles are, cal are, are hungry for protein. They're calorie hungry, but they're also hungry for protein. So make sure always after you train, the instant you set down your last weight, okay, you are having your protein with your L-glutamine, with your leucine and with your creatine, okay? Always, immediately after you train. Those are gonna protect your muscles, help them to grow and give them exactly what they need, okay? Next question. <laughs> uh, do you drink, do we drink BCAA on non-training days before going for a morning walk? Absolutely, BCAA, it, it doesn't say drink BCAA on some mornings, it says upon waking, drink BCAA. That's every day, okay? Every day for the 28 days. It's a really good habit to get into even on non-training days. Just try and avoid BCA with artificial sweeteners. Try and avoid anything with artificial sweeteners. Those things are not good for you. Anything with, with aspartame, um, with uh, sucralose, uh, what's the other really bad one? Aspartame, sucralose, um, can't think of the other one. The thing, uh, stevia is fine, xylitol is fine. Uh, stevia in small quantities though, but xylitol is fine, um, but you de definitely aspartame, it gives you brain cancer guys, literally, if you want to know what aspartame does to your body, just google the dangers of aspartame or aspartame, I think you call it in America, absolutely horrendous, you have no idea, avoid it like the plague, anything that has sucralose or aspartame in it, avoid it like the plague, because you're not doing any good to your body, you're only harming it. 
Okay, Laga is also asking, are we posting one picture with all four before and four after pictures, a collage using four weeks red final? No, so you're not posting photos from every week, you're only posting your starting day photo and your finishing day photo, okay? Uh, you're saying, or do we have to post two separate pictures, one at the beginning and one at the end with the same hashtag? So you're not, no, you're just posting, you're getting your before picture, your after picture, you're putting them together using some kind of app, like maybe layout, um, and with the, the, the signs in the background, and also with holding the newspaper, that's very important, and you just post that, okay? That's your final, and that, so you can post, what I would love for you to do is, I would love for you to be posting, you know, in this group, and I love you to be posting in, you know, on especially on Instagram. Like, post your progress pictures on Instagram if you're brave enough. Pe um, can I tell you what I'll see? This is just a wee pro tip for anybody wanting to grow their Instagram. I've grown my Instagram to 116,000 followers in just under two years, right? And people always say to me, how did you do it? Well, one of the ways that I did it, the most important way, was I decided I was going to bring everybody along on my journey. So two years ago, I was not even a bodybuilder. I was a yoga teacher. I used to power lift years ago. I had all this knowledge, but I had never really applied it. And I decided, I announced to the world that I was going to start this bodybuilding journey. And I invited everybody to follow me on my journey. If you go onto my Instagram page and you scroll down to the very first pictures I posted, you'll be shocked at what you see. Everyone will be like, oh, my God, see, now I would look like. Um, so you'll be shocked at what you say. Like I, I, my, it was completely different. I invited the world on my journey. People love to be part of a journey. They love to be part of the transformation. People write to me even today and say, Kim, I have followed you from the very beginning. I remember when you were a skinny yoga teacher. I remember when you just, you know, started doing this. Um, it's so wonderful, like to have people who've been there from the beginning and they love to be a part of it. So if you're brave enough, post your journey on Instagram, tell people, announce to the world. It's an amazing way to keep yourself accountable as well. Announce to the world and say, I'm doing the sculpted vegan four week shred and I want you all to keep me accountable. Here is my before picture. But you know what? I hate this before picture. But do you know what? My transformation is going to be epic. It's going to be absolutely epic. So I'm posting it here for accountability, right? If you know that you're going to stick to this, you know your transformation is going to be epic. Post your before picture and be proud to post it. And then invite people to support you and follow along with you and post your daily updates and your daily pictures and then ask them to share it with their friends and to, you know, and, the, and then they'll be posting and saying, I'm so proud of my friend and, I'm, you know, I'm on this journey with this girl. That's how you get more followers. Invite people on your journey. So that's just a wee top tip from Kim today. Um, so, but just post your before and after picture for the final, okay? Amy says, that's the scariest thing I've ever heard. Okay, I'm going to do it. Amy, you get the gold star today. I love people who are like, that scares the shit out of me, so I'm definitely going to do it. That's why I've always lived my life. I have always lived my life by saying, that scares the bejesus out of me, so I'm 100% going to do it. That's what I always say to people. Like, if it scares you, you should definitely do it, because then that's where you're going to grow the most. If you always stay, like, here's your comfort zone, okay? This is your comfort zone. This is your comfort zone. Do you know where the magic happens? Or here. In fact, you can't even see it. Here. This is where the magic happens. In fact, the magic happens way over there. You can't even see the magic because you're so much in your comfort zone. Get out of your comfort zone. Get out. That's how I have become what I have become today. I, I literally just, and I didn't just step outside my comfort zone. I, I dove head first outside of my comfort zone and then swam out into the ocean. So Amy, proud of you. Do it. Okay? Do it. Golda is saying, could you have a separate Instagram without your name? Just with my work, I wouldn't want them to see it. Dealing with environment agencies, ministers, etc. Yes, there's a girl in the program, Golda, Karen in the program. She, um, I think she's, uh, well, now I'm like, maybe I shouldn't send this public. Like, no, she won't mind, actually, but she is a one of the groups. But Karen is a police officer. And so she never posts pictures of her face on her Instagram, and she doesn't have her real name on it either. She just has, I think, her first name and her middle name. So people, if they put in her name, would never be able to find her. So yeah, 100%, you can do that. You can like start a pseudonym Instagram account, call yourself something slightly different. You can even you can call yourself like the, you know, the something vegan as well. It doesn't even have to be your name. And you can post all your pictures without your face in it. Ta-da! If you want to, of course you could. Okay, so Liga is saying, in the PDF, you say, try to eat no more than two 280 gram blocks of tofu, tofu per day. So we're allowed 560 grams of tofu per day. That is correct. Yep. <laughs> Just as it's written. It's so funny. Like I, I, I know, and I, I always have a wee giggle to myself because everyone always goes, 
You know, I'm, am I allowed edamame? Is edamame on the food list? No. No. They're like, okay. Then I had a girl write to me yesterday, can I have blueberries and bananas? Is blueberries and bananas on the food list? No. I know they're not allowed. <laughs> So, you know, we always want to, we always want to find like the wee caveat, you know, uh, and I, I love, I literally have such a giggle at the questions. So um, I, the reason why I say no more than two blocks of tofu per day is because tofu is quite high in fat, right? And the reason why people don't shred effectively, the reason why most, whenever people write to me, okay, especially vegans, and they write to me and they say, I did a competition prep and I stood on stage and I didn't lose the amount of weight that I wanted to lose. You know, what's your advice? I always say to them, you are probably eating too many calories from fat. The, the reason people do not achieve their weight loss goals is because they're eating too many calories from fat. That is the honest to God's truth. It was the mistake that I made whenever I did my first prep. I worked my ass off. I couldn't, I couldn't have trained anymore, exercised anymore, walked anymore, lifted any heavier, but I was eating too many calories from fat. I was eating, I think, up to four blocks of tofu a day sometimes. Um, so um, I didn't realize because I was trying to, you know, follow the traditional bodybuilders diet. I've made all the mistakes, guys. You don't need to make them because I've like totally made them all. So you don't need to make the mistakes. I've made them for you. Um, I was eating probably, I was trying to follow the bodybuilders diet of lean protein and green vegetables, which is a very traditional bodybuilders diet. But what I didn't realize was whenever they meant, whenever they said lean protein, they meant like white fish, not oily fish. And like, you know, bone dry chicken or turkey, really, really like no red meat, no fatty meat or whatever. And um, so I was trying to do it as a vegan and I was eating um, loads of tofu and thinking tofu, but it was really high in protein. But what I didn't realize was it was also really high in fat. So that's why I didn't shred the way I wanted to for the first ever competition that I did. So I say no more than two blocks of tofu. If you can keep it to one, it's even better. Okay. Two is the absolute max, but two, two is two, two is the limit. It's not a target, okay? Does that make sense? You don't like try to hit two. It's a limit, not a target. Make sense? Amy is saying that's a shit lot of tofu. It totally is. And people always go, how are your hormones? I'm like, my hormones are fine. I get them tested like twice a year. Comprehensive, in-depth hormone tests. Soy does not affect your hormones, people, okay? I'm here to bust that myth for you now. It is scaremongering. <laughs> It has been proven that it was the meat industry, interestingly, that released the information that soy would wreck your hormones. Isn't that really interesting? That it was them, whenever they realized people were moving to meatless Mondays and moving across, for, you know, to soy-based or, you know, meat alternatives, then suddenly all of this information started hitting the market about how bad for you soy was. Hmm, interesting. Who would stand to gain from that, people believing that information? So really, truly... It's not true. Soy does not affect your hormones. Um, and I, if anyone can, can bring me a scientific study, a scientific study to show me that isn't just opinion or theory or hypotheses that soy affects your hormones, I would love to see it because I have researched for three years and I have never been able to find one single science-based study that isn't based in a, well, we hypothesize that it may because it contains this and this has been shown in the past to possibly potentially affect this thing. I'm like, there's so many possibilities, maybe, maybes, potentialies in there that it actually doesn't even make sense anymore. But nobody thinks to ask. Everyone just goes, oh, I heard that soy affects your hormones and, 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 and it mimics estrogen in the body. And I have a thyroid problem and I'm not really sure how it affects my thyroid, but my doctor, who's a carnivore, by the way, told me that it possibly could, so I can't eat soy. And whenever I dig a little deeper with people, why can't I eat soy? They go, I'm not really sure. I just heard that it kind of almost maybe does in some way affect your hormones. I've never been able to find one scientific study. I love to go off on these wee rants. You'll get to know me very well. Anyone in my other 12-month group knows that on a Q&A Tuesday, I just go off on a little tangent and have a little rant. But they all seem to love my rants, so you'll never change me. Don't even try uh, Liga is saying, I just couldn't believe it. Christina is saying, do you think we can keep this program up for more than four weeks so that we too hard? Christina, you could literally turn right around and do this program again if you wanted to. But don't say that now. Wait till you get to the end of the four weeks and then decide. But you know, can I tell you, the first week's really hard. Second week's easier. See by the time you got to the fourth week, even though you're doing an hours party in the morning and an hours party in the evening, by then it's, by then it's habit. And you're like, actually, this, this walking is very therapeutic. And 
and it might get my headspace and I feel so strong and so clean and I have so much energy. You won't believe the amount of energy you have. So the first week's hard, but see how you feel at the end of the four weeks. But 100%, you could turn right around and do it again. No problem. Um, Faith is saying, is tempeh approved for soy? Yep, absolutely, 100%. Um, hi, Kim. It's, I can't pronounce your name. It's Ga... I hate not getting people's names right. Gayatri. Gayatri? It's a beautiful name. I'm looking forward to starting the four weeks red. Just signed up. I'm quite nervous, which means it's important to me. I'm ready to give it everything. I love that. Whenever something's important to me, I get nervous as well. And I don't tell anyone. I get nervous and I'm like, I'm just going to keep this a secret and not tell anyone. And that's how I know that it really is important to me and I'm going to do well. So I'm excited. Rasa is saying, hey, hey girl, how are you? Good to see you. Um, Garati is saying, so I'm reading a few from here before I go back to the questions. Sorry, I just joined. Are we strictly on the shopping list on the PDF? Any fruit, carrot, tomatoes allowed? Assume nuts are a no-no due to high fat. You're so funny. I've actually just answered this question and I was like, people write to me and they go, um, I, can I, are bananas and blueberries allowed? And I go, uh, is it on the shopping list? And they go, no. I'm like, then no, it's not allowed. I'm like, all right. What about edamame? Is edamame on the shopping list? Uh, no, it's not. No, no, then it's not allowed. <laughs> so it's like, it's on the shopping list. It's really simple, okay? I'm just going to make it really, really easy for everybody listening. If it's on the shopping list, it's allowed. If it's not on the shopping list, it's not allowed. <laughs> I'm a cheeky bitch, aren't I? But like, really, it is like, now, can I stop you from having things that aren't on the shopping list? No! Can you have things on the shopping list if you want to? Yes! It's your life. You can do whatever you want. But I'm not going to give you permission to cheat. Does that make sense? Like, I'm not going to say, yeah, sure, no problem. Have a few carrots. I mean, have a banana. Throw a banana in your breakfast. Go on ahead. Because you know what would happen if I did that? Then everyone would go, oh, well, Kim said banana's okay. So we're all allowed banana. No. So if it's on the shopping list, it's okay. If it's not on the shopping list, it's not okay. Kate Carter is saying, we do. We love your rants. Dear God, Kate. I'm glad somebody does. Because truly, honestly, you should live with me. When I get started, my husband's like, oh gosh, she's off again. Oh, uh, okay, so here we are. Um, Liga is saying, you allow salt, will that not be, make the body retain water? Nope, another myth. <laughs> the only time we would ever restrict salt is if you're in the last week and you're shredding for a competition. It's the only time that affects you. As you're drinking tons of water, your body needs salt because here's what happens. Here's the scientific rant for you. I love doing these as well. So whenever you drink water, um, your body, your obviously your, the water flushes through your kidneys. It's your kidneys' job to balance the amount of sodium and potassium in your body, okay? So if you are drinking millions and millions of water, but you're not eating enough sodium, what happens is you suffer from low sodium, okay? So whenever people have congestive heart failure, it means that their heart can't clear, it isn't strong enough to clear, to make the kidneys work effect effectively and to uh, clear swelling from the body. So if you ever see anyone with swollen legs, it, it can indicate a heart problem because it means that the heart isn't able to make pump blood effectively to the kidneys to clear away the water. Whenever people have oedema, which is swelling, then it dilutes the sodium in their blood, which sends them to lally. People can die from low sodium, okay? It's really, really, really dangerous. So whenever you're drinking heaps of water, which I hope you are every day, and you definitely will be on this program, you need a good amount of salt because you don't want your sodium to become diluted and your kidneys will balance the amount of uh, sodium and potassium in your blood. Now, another thing um, that I just want to say as well is that it's really important that you eat a really good salt, okay? In this house, there is zero table salt. Table salt does not exist in this house. My daughter, who's eight, said to me the other day, Mommy, why don't we buy white salt? And I said, uh, I said, because it's really not good for you. And she said, well, what salt do we buy? I said, well, I cook with Celtic sea salt. So Celtic sea salt is basically, it's gray in color. It is salt that is, um, I think they harvest in Normandy in France, and they have these great, great big vats in the seawater, and they uh, basically, they lift them up so the seawater dries on top of the vats, and then they scrape the salt off, and then they package it, and they sell it. I get mine on Amazon. It is absolutely packed with all the minerals of the sea. It is called Celtic sea salt, packed with all the minerals of the sea. That salt is good for your body. It contains all 164 elements that salt should contain. Same with Himalayan mountain salt. I grind Himalayan mountain salt, only because I can't get the sea salt in big enough granules to grind it. Um, I would cook with Himalayan mountain salt as well, but, you know, just because this works for my life, it's the way I've done it. So um, Himalayan mountain salt, again, contains all of the minerals and enzymes that salt should contain. It has not been stripped of any of its minerals, so that salt is actually good for you. Table salt, 
has been stripped of every single mineral that it contains. Even the mold and sea salt, everyone goes, oh yeah, but we're mold and sea salt people. We love to, you know, sprinkle it. Mold and sea salt, same thing. It has still been stripped of all. If, any, if salt is snow white, then it's been stripped of every single part of goodness, right? So you do never want to eat snow white salt. You want to eat Celtic sea salt or you want to have Himalayan mountain salt, okay? If salt is white, just remember, it contains no nutrients. Um, does it make much difference when to take apple cider vinegar? E.g., is it okay if I take it upon waking instead of before breakfast? It's better to take it before breakfast because it helps you to digest your food better. So that's basically the reason why. So if you take it um, just before breakfast um, and then you eat, I mean, it doesn't really matter when you take it, but if you take it just before eating, then it helps you to digest your food better and it helps you to your body break down the food, which means that more of the nutrients are um, assimilated and go into where they should be going and all that good stuff. So totally good. Okay. So Debbie. Oh yeah. Okay. So that was the end of like his like long list of questions. Really love them though. Spot on. Debbie is asking, how much BCAA do we add to the water? Mine suggests two servings per day max, but each serving diluted with less water than you state in the plan. Does that matter? Debbie, really good question. So here's the drill. Are you listening? Anyone who does any of my programs is now, you're, whenever you're a member of my program, you are considered an athlete, okay? Okay, you're an athlete. When you do the four-week shed, you're an athlete. The minute people join my 12-month program, from then on in, I refer to them as an athlete. I will say, good morning, athletes. How are you, athletes? And I will say to them, you're an athlete now. And the reason you're an athlete now is because I am an athlete and I only train other athletes, right? This is going somewhere, I promise. This is like one of these rants where you're like, where is she going with this? So the minute you join my program, you become an athlete. Anyone in the four-week shred is now an athlete. Even if you don't look like an athlete, you don't feel like an athlete, and you certainly have never thought of yourself like an athlete, you are. The reason why is because you have now joined an athlete-style program. The four-week shred has been designed by an athlete for athletes. This is not the program for the average person. Okay? The average person does not do this program. You need a certain mindset. You need to be strong. You need to be willing to show up, do the work, be ready to battle through, do whatever it takes. That is the mindset of an athlete. That's the first thing you need to be an athlete is the mindset. When you have the mindset, I will teach you how to have the body. How does this relate to your question? Well, athletes do not take supplements in the same forms or in the same quantities as regular people. Okay, Regular people take they look at the back of the packet and they do what it says on the tin. Athletes don't. Athletes have to take more of the supplements because we are putting more of a demand on our body. So if it's, I never even look at what it says on the back, and I'm not, I'm not advising this by the way, you should read the packet, do what it says, but generally you need things in higher quantities. So when I take a, a portion of BCAA, it says, you know, oh, take, you know, one serving and, and like they have to have a one size fits all, okay? They have to, because otherwise, you know, how would they ever advise people? So they have to have this one size fits all thing on the back of the packet. I think I'm gonna sneeze, hang on. Am I? No, I'm okay. So, um, so basically whenever I have BCAA, I will get my liter bottle and I will put two, it's not even a heat, it's not even a teaspoon, it's bigger, it's like a round spoon. You know, like, like one of those little dessert spoons they would have eaten with years ago. I will have two heaped ones of those in a liter of water. I would say that's probably a good 20 grams to 25 grams of BCAA in a liter of water, right? On the back of the packet, it says five grams. I'll have 25, right? But the reason why I have 25 is because when I go to the gym, I am squatting, deadlifting, pressing. I am grunting and grinding harder than the average person. And that's what you're going to be doing. So I'm placing more of a demand on my body than the average person. So I take things in higher quantities. And that's basic. Just like a bodybuilder with more muscle needs to eat more than the average Joe, a, an athlete who's doing the four-week shred needs to take a bigger variety and a bigger, um, a bigger quantity of the supplements in order to get the same results. Also, the other thing is that you have a professional athlete advising you. Most people don't. Most people only have what it says on the back of the packet, and they don't actually have someone to say, well, is this okay to take more of? I have an enormous amount of experience, okay? And I'm also very well read and researched. And not only do I, you know, do I have an enormous amount of experience in myself, I've coached thousands, like I have 70,000 people in my network at the minute. So like that's a, that's a lot of experience. So you can take things in higher quantities. Yes. Okay. Um, one second. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the questions. Um, Terry Walsh is asking, 
Are green beans included in the unlimited veg? They're not on the list, but are included in a recipe. Uh, Terry, yes, the, the list is not exhaustive, okay? Yes, they absolutely are, and I thought they were included in the list. I apologize that they're not. The list, yes, green beans are 100% included. And what I encourage you to do is to look for, um, do a little Google search for green cruciferous vegetables. Look at the list. If it's on the list and it's green, the only exception is cauliflower. So if it's on the list of green cruciferous vegetables, it's allowed and it's a free food, right? Peas are not a free food, just so you know, okay? Neither are bell peppers, even if they're green, they're not cruciferous, they're very high in sugar. Um, and there's a couple of other ones that people are like, is it or is it not? Like zucchini, no, not a green cruciferous veg. So just think of uh, cruciferous as being um, things that are like, could be a tree or a leaf, right? So broccoli, uh, beans, you know, um, spinach and kale and that kind of stuff, you know, asparagus, you know, th those are like kind of plants, if you like, like a courgette is kind of more of a, it grows in the ground, well, it doesn't actually grow in the ground, it grows on a tree, but yeah, my, my analogy's not working, sure it's not. Anyway, just Google. <laughs> just Google green cruciferous veg and you'll be, and you'll be sweet. You'll be good, you'll be good. Okay, so will we get a detailed daily recipe plan or just the basic guidelines already in the PDF? Uh, Andrea, sorry, Andrea Wilton-Clark is asking that. Andrea, no, you don't get a detailed recipe plan and I'll tell you why, because it would be impossible to do a detailed daily recipe plan for every single person in the program. I, I have sold over 300 copies of this program so far and I haven't even released it to my 60,000 strong email list, right? So it, I couldn't release a program that would suit 300 or 600 or 1,000 people or however many people are gonna be in the shred. I couldn't possibly create a detailed recipe plan that would suit every single person because your protein and carb intake and requirements are gonna be different to mine, are gonna be different to the next person's and Sally's and Joe's and, and Sarah's and everybody's, everybody's is going to be different. So I, I provided some sample recipes with the uh, nutritional breakdown so that you can double up on the protein or you can, you know, have the protein or whatever, you, or you can half the recipe, you know, depending on your um, daily intake, but it will be impossible to provide a detailed meal plan for every single person in the program because every single person's macros, which are your proteins, carbs, and fats requirements are different. Okay. So no, could never possibly have done it. So you're just going to have to suck it up and figure it out for yourself. <laughs> this program is hard. Like I'm, I'm telling you now, this program is tough. It's not easy. And part of the toughness is you're going to have to sit down probably with one of these, your trusty best friend. Work it out. Maybe, maybe even, no, I'm just getting cheeky. Maybe even one of these. Remember these things before we all had iPhones? <laughs> and a piece of paper, and you might actually have to sit down and do a wee bit of work. <laughs> um, yeah, you don't have to suck it up, I'm afraid. But you'll be grand. Because you know why? Because you're an athlete. Athletes show up, do the work. And I know that you have it in you. I can tell. Osmosisly through the computer. Okay, Linda is asking, if we can only eat 50 grams of protein from tofu, what else besides protein powder do you recommend to get all of the grams of protein in? Um, it's not that you can only eat 50 from tofu. My tofu has 32 grams in a 280 block, so that's 64. Um, but the rest of the protein, I hate to tell you, because you're vegan and you're on a shred, is going to come from um, black beans, lentils, uh, and sweet potato. Not sweet potato. Protein powder, black beans, lentils, and protein powder, okay? Now, black beans are really, really high in protein and really low in carbs. Like, they are amazing. Do you know what else is absolutely phenomenal? Lupin beans. Did I put lupin beans on the on the thing? I don't think I did because they're so hard to find. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little caveat, and I might even add it to the food list. Um, lupin beans are new to me, okay? They were introduced to me by one of my private coaching clients who lives in Israel, and her name is Sally, and she is phenomenal and Sally um, introduced me to lupin beans and they have 32 grams or 34 grams of carbohydrates per hundred and very little carbs and fat very little like minuscule and I was like oh these are like the lean protein of the vegan world so look up lupin beans okay I might even add them to the download I'm gonna have to I, I'm gonna write it down I'm gonna have a look at it because they are pretty bloody phenomenal but they are hard to get you have to order them on Amazon 
Um, so otherwise, I'm really, I hate to tell you that protein powder is going to be your best friend. It always is. Like, I'm sorry, a vegan bodybuilder, we, you know, we, we have to supplement with protein powder. It, and if you think about it this way, people always go, but it's not real food. And I say, well, it is real food. It's just that it's real food that's powdered. You know how whenever you have a baby and um, the baby's ready to eat and yeah, they eat off your plate and you'll squish things up and they'll give it to them. But you also steam some vegetables and puree them, right? Don't you puree food for a baby? Well, that's exactly what athletes do. We get protein powder and we extract the protein from the, well, you get, you know, a soybean or something. You extract the protein from the soybean and then you powder it. It's just like baby food, but for athletes. So that's the way I like to think of protein powder. It is real food. It's just real food, very conveniently powdered, so you can shake it up and drink it and make it taste good. So uh, Golda is asking, hey guys, I can't get my macros right. Do I just put in complex carbs and leave out the green veggies on my fitness pal? Yes, you've got it right. When I work out my protein and carb grams and start inputting, I'm left with loads of protein grams, but very little calories. It doesn't matter about the calories, Golda, okay? Don't look at the calories. You're only looking at the protein and the carbs. Ignore everything else on my fitness plan, okay? Obviously, because I have put the fat to zero, and with the tofu, it has fat in it. She said, um, Kim has said it's really simple, but I'm stumped. Right, so what I did was, I actually made a video. I did like a screen grab on my phone, okay? I did like a video and a screen grab on my phone of uh, my fitness pal last night. I just to do a voiceover on it. Um, I'm gonna do the voiceover tonight and I'm gonna post the video in the group. And I'm gonna send it out as well. So it shows you how to, ch how to go into my fitness pal, how to change everything. So all you're doing in my fitness pal, in fact, you know what? I'm gonna show you now, right? Why we're on here, because it's been so bloody difficult to try and um, do the screen grab. Right? Because you know why? Because whenever I recorded it, it records it like this, right? Long way, but whenever I put it into my recording software, I only have like this band across the middle. It doesn't take the full screen. So um, it's telling me that they want me to change my password. So annoying. Okay, let me try it here. I'm just going to show you how to do this. Why do they want me to change my password? This is annoying. Let me just do this now. And then I'm going to show you. Da -da -da. Let's see if this works. Um, yes, it did work. Okay, perfect. So... Here's your MyFitnessPal, okay? So what you want to do is you want to go down here to the bottom. See these wee more? Where am I going here? See more here? You click on more, and then it takes you to here, right? Now, I have premium MyFitnessPal. If you don't have premium MyFitnessPal, you're probably going to have to get it for a month. It's not expensive, right? So here is your, um, your thing. You want to go here to nutrition. When you click on nutrition, it brings you to here. Now, the default, as you can see, is percentages, right? You do not want percentages. You do not want percentages. You want to click on, click on, see where it says 36%? Click on that. And then it brings you, damn, yeah, hang on. Then it brings you to here, okay? Got this? See where it says goal, 90? What you want to do is you want to click on that. Click on goal, 90. That brings you to here. So this is where you can change your grams, right? So if we click on carbohydrates, it brings you to here. Now, most, most of this will be set as percentages, right? So this is how it'll look. So here, if you were in my 12-month sculpted vegan program, we would change this to 30, 30, 40, right? That, uh, that's what your macro percentage would be. So what we would do in the Sculpted Vegan program is you would work out your calories first of all. So say you're going to be on 2,000 calories. We would say, right, well, your 2,000 calories is a 30, 30, 40 split. 30 protein, 30 fat, 40 carb. So you would go in here and you would change these percentages, right? And then that would tell you how many grams you had to eat every day. We're not doing that on this program. We're not worrying about calories. So what you want to do here is you want to press grams, okay? Then you want to change these wee counters, to whatever your protein is. So if your protein is, let's say, 160 grams a day and your carbs are, say, 90 grams a day, okay? And you leave the fat at zero, right? Then you click the wee tick for yes. Let's see if I can get it, hang on. And it takes you back to here, okay? Now, let's go back to home. So to go back to home, you just press the home button at the bottom. See home there? 
So then, what this does now is as you input food, it counts down from what you have remaining here at the top. So whenever you put in food, and what I always recommend people to do is play around with it, right? So go if you go into your diary here, see the way it says today in the middle? See if you click the little arrow, it'll take you to tomorrow. And if you click the arrow again, it'll take you to Wednesday. So you can basically plan your entire week's food into the my into my fitness pal. And you can, so what I do first is I go into breakfast and I say, right, what am I going to have for breakfast? So I'm going to have oatmeal. So I'm going to put in my oatmeal. How much oatmeal? Well, I'm going to experiment with a quarter of a cup, see what that does. Okay, so it's going to be made with water. Don't count that. I'm not going to put any sugar in it. Don't count that. So I'm going to put in a scoop of protein powder. So you put in your protein powder and then you go back and then you look and you say, okay, what does that do to my daily total? And you look and you go, oh, well, this is great. I have, now this obviously hasn't because I haven't actually put it in. So it tells you, how, it deducts how many carbs were in that, how much protein is in that from your totals. So then you say, well, I know post-workout I'm going to have a protein shake. So I'm going to put in 50 grams of protein and I'm going to put that in and see what it does. Oh, that's great that I only have X amount of protein left in. So what about if I have a block of to tofu at lunch? So you put in the block of tofu and then you say, I'm going to eat the tofu with millions of green vegetables so I don't have to count those. So lunch is basically just a block of tofu. So now you've got your breakfast, you've got your lunch, tofu and green vegetables, you've got your post-workout protein shake, and now you've got dinner. So you look at your, your, your carbs and your fats, and you've got loads of carbs left for dinner because you only had a little bit of protein, you only had a little bit of um, oatmeal in the morning. So, and even if you didn't have any carbs in the morning, this is a great way to do it as well. I love carbs at dinner. So I will sometimes have a protein shake in the morning, then I will have my lunch, loads of green vegetables and tofu. Then I'll have my post-workout protein shake after I train. And then for dinner, I'll save up all my carbs for dinner. So I'll go, okay, right. So I'm going to have 100 grams of black beans. What does that do? Oh, yes, still loads of carbs left. Okay, now I'm going to have 100 grams of lentils. What does that do? Oh, okay, a little bit of carbs left. Does that leave me enough for some sweet potato? So when you put in 100 grams of sweet potato, you have to weigh your sweet potato, okay? Don't just go by one medium, because I was putting in like one medium sweet potato once, I remember. And then I actually weighed it, and I realized the sweet potato I was eating was 400 grams. And it was actually calculating it at 200 big difference okay weigh everything measure in grams one gram weigh the sweet potato and then put in how many grams it actually weighs okay so um just play around with it do oh no hang on sweet potato pushes me over my carbs i'm gonna take that out or i'm gonna leave it and i'm gonna reduce my black beans i'm gonna have 50 grams of black beans what does that do yes that leads me within my carbs and it still leaves me enough for a protein shake before dinner so I'm planning tomorrow's food, right? You can sit down on a Sunday and you can do this for the entire week and you write them down as you go. Okay, breakfast on Monday. Remember this thing here we talked about earlier? This pen, and you might need one of these, okay? Piece of paper, diary, write it down. Monday, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack. Tuesday, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack. You get the drift, you see? That's how it works. And if you really wanted to be like out there and get like the double gold star, you would open your calendar and you would write in your calendar on your computer, which updates to your phone, what you're having for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Smart, right? You do that on a Sunday, you plan in advance, and all of your food is planned and you stay within your macros. It's so easy when you know how. It's easy for me because I've been doing it for years. I forget that you guys haven't been doing it for years. So really 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 easy so Golda is saying yes and that and at that point it works out to 100 and 1200 odd calories forget about the calories Golda the calories aren't important don't worry don't look at the calories pretend they don't exist be like calories calories peas and carrots peas and carrots peas and carrots peas and carrots not looking at the calories okay not looking at the calories calories don't matter but then I have 53 calories left but still 90 grams of protein which will be about 300 additional calories Golda, I love you. But you have to start worrying about the calories, okay? Um, just, it's not hard. Plan your protein first, okay? You're planning your, it sounds like you're planning your carbs first, right? So if you plan your carbs first, you're going to fail, right? You need to plan your protein first. So go through what protein am I having for breakfast? What protein am I having post-workout? What protein am I having for dinner? Plan your protein for every single meal. Plan to hit your protein on my fitness pal. You want to see your protein. Like I planned all my food because I want, whenever I was doing this video for you guys, I planned all the food and this is what I was left with, okay? Three grams of protein, five grams of carbs. Is that okay? Am I going to try and eat something to get that to zero? No. If the protein was 10, I probably still would have left it as well. And if I had gone over on carbs by like 12, wouldn't have worried. <laughs> 
It's really not going to make that much of a difference. Your goal isn't to be perfect. Your goal is to be consistent and to get as close to your macros as you can. But if you plan your protein first, that's the goal. You must, you're saying, sorry, sweetie, don't be sorry. I'm just being facetious. I'm really, um, don't be sorry. But you have to get out. It's so hard to get out of the calorie mindset. It really is. But you're like, and people have been going, oh, but that's only a thousand calories. I'll never survive. I'm like, you see, you're suffering. You're projectively suffering into the future and you haven't even arrived there yet. So don't worry about the calories. You're totally, you're like, honestly, you've no idea. You have enough motivation to do this. You have enough you know, strength and energy and tenacity because I've interacted with you a lot in the groups and you can 100% do this, okay? So don't worry about the calories or what you have left. Just plan your protein first. Plan your protein first, okay? And then come back to me and tell me how you've done. <sighs> okay, serious rant. I ain't gonna, ain't gonna uh, go there. So Kathleen's saying, do we recalculate our macros each week as the weight drops? No. No. Because you're not going to drop that much weight. Like, you're going to, you know, like, if you dropped, like, eight kilos in the first week, then I would say yes. But otherwise, no. Just follow, you, you do drop your carbs each week, okay? So your calories do drop, right? Because if you look at the formula, your carbs drop each week, right? Your protein stays the same, but your carbs drop each week. So you are actually dropping your calories each week anyway. So don't recalculate. Don't make it any more difficult than it needs to be. <laughs> Uh, Amy is saying, my lord, this has been so helpful. The calendar thing, brilliant. Yeah, you see? I mean, like... This, it's the small things. It's the small things. So, um, okay, here we go. Amy is asking, uh, is there a way to follow the cardio and weight training plan without supplements and possibly without protein shakes? <laughs> Wouldn't say so. Uh, I try to stick to a whole food plant-based meal plan as much as possible. Is there a calorie recommendation? Excuse me while I go and kill myself. Hang on. I'll be back in a minute. I'm just going to go and kill myself. Okay. <laughs> Why are you joking? Um, is there a calorie recommendation I could stick to instead of the macros? No, Amy, there's not. And listen, Amy, I know you've said you try to follow a whole food diet, but like, truly, like protein powder is whole food. It's just whole food that's been pureed and powdered. Like it was a whole food to begin with. If we just extracted the protein, powdered it up, and made it convenient for you. So it depends on what you know, Amy. Th th there comes a point where I'm going to give you some tough love. Okay, love giving people tough love. Well, I don't really like it, but I kind of do enjoy it a wee bit. So, um, Amy, there comes a point where one must choose, right? My husband always says there comes a point when a woman must choose between her bum and her face. Like, seriously, if you get really skinny and you have a really nice ass, you're going to have loads of wrinkles, right? Unless you get loads of Botox, and then you'll be fine. But um, really, you must choose between your bum and your face. There comes a point where you must choose between your whole food, plant-based diet and getting really, really peeled. And if you want to get really shredded, you might have to just suck it up and have some protein powder because you, you know, there's a, you can't really have your cake and eat it too, you know, and you can't have bananas and blueberries on the four week shred and you can't have edamame and peas on the four week shred and you can't eat a whole food plant based diet on the four week shred because you'll never get your protein and you'll be starving. Okay. Now, are there other programs you could follow where you just eat whole food plant based and you shred in four weeks? I am sure there are. On my program, can you do it? No. <laughs> So, but of course, I'm going to go back to my original point, which is, this is your life, this is your plan, and you can do whatever you want, and with love, not, and I'm, that's not me, that's not me being like, well, you can just do whatever you want, and you don't have to follow my plan, that's me being like, really honest, you can do whatever you want, because this is your life, and if you want to change the plan up to suit your lifestyle, and see, see how you go, 100%. But I can't guarantee the results if you change the plan. And that's the big difference. Then you'll come back and you'll go, well, I really didn't lose very much weight. That plan's not very good. Did you stick to the plan? No, I changed the whole thing. <laughs> so, you, you know, I, I can only guarantee the results if you stick to the plan. If you don't stick to the plan, can't guarantee any results, okay? Kathleen, take a look on your face. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, I'm all out there. A fortune teller once told me that I was as shallow as a puddle. And I think she meant it as a compliment. What she meant was, there's no back doors with me. What you see is what you get. Like, I don't pretend. I just, I don't pretend. What you see is what you get. Okay. Uh, Kirsten is saying, so based on my weight, my protein should be 283.2. Is that even possible? That's a lot, Kristen. Okay. You might not want to, you might not want to have that much protein. So, uh, Kristen, post your question in the group, okay? Post your calculations in the group and um, and we will uh, and tag Stace, okay? And we'll check that for you because that, that's a lot of protein. 
you don't want to eat much protein. Wouldn't be good for your kidneys. Okay, so here we are. Oh, you're saying, do I have to take do the training plan without supplements? Yes, and Lisa Grace, Lisa, who is in my 12-month program and is a joy to behold, says, supplements are always optional. She has already said there's no calorie recommendation. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Um, so, yeah, supplements are always optional, 100%, always optional. But, I mean, are can I guarantee the results if you don't take them? No. So I can't say, no, you don't have to take the supplements, it's fine. If you want to get the results, you have to follow the plan. If you don't mind possibly not getting the results, you don't have to follow the plan. Totally up to you, okay? But I can't I can't give you a way out, right? Um, Kathleen saying, you have the best lines I've ever heard of. Shallow as a puddle. Totally going to use it. That's what she said about me. She was like, that girl is shallow as a puddle. And I was like, I'm not really sure if that's a compliment. Like, I was, she said, no, no, it's really good. She said, it means that, like, there's no back doors with you. What you see is what you get. You don't pretend to be anything you're not. And I was like, yes, 100%. Um, Gayatri is, oh, no, hang on, I have to get that right. Gayatri, yeah, Gayatri is saying, should we aim at high protein, low carb beans, pulses, and lentils? They have lots of different types. Could we sprout them? You could, but here's the thing. I've told you which ones you're allowed on the food list. So don't deviate from the food list, right? Now, could you have any kind of beans you wanted? Technically, yes, but I've given you the ones that are the best for fat loss, right? So, and because this is a fat loss program and I want you to get the best results, try and stick with the ones that are on the list, okay? Good girl. Um, like I said, mine is 220 grams. 220 grams is fine, okay? That's what mine would be too. So, uh, but 283 to 300 is kind of pushing the limit for a girl. Uh, okay, Tracy is saying, hi, can you have beetroot at all? <laughs> can you see this wall here? It's going to like bang my head off at now. <laughs> can you have beetroot? You're all going to be pissing yourselves. You're going to be, I'm going to watch her cute every week just to see, does somebody ask her, can they have something that ain't on the food list? Can you have beetroot at all if included in carbs? And can a hit class and spinning class be part of your cardio? No, no, and no. You can't have anything that I, no, okay, you can, but I can't allow you to have anything. You see, you're all laughing. You're, this is what I have to deal with on a daily basis. I was like, whenever I released this program and I was getting all of these questions, I was like, is this really so hard? And I said to my husband, I was like, okay, hey, read this plan and tell me, does it not make sense? Because maybe I haven't written it correctly. Maybe there's something I've done. And I gave it to like a few of my friends. I was like, I really, truly, I need I need to understand, you know, and uh, that I need to know that I have, and I have made this as clear as I can possibly make it. And they all read it and they were like, no, you've been really clear. And I was like, no, and like, is there any room for error? Like, could I have, is there something I could have missed? And they were like, no, you've given them the food. You've told them how to cook, whatever. So I was like, okay, no, it's not me. So I, I'm like, maybe I need to be a wee bit, maybe in the, maybe I need to, to write in the PDF. You cannot have anything that isn't on the food list. So um, beetroot, really high in sugar, Tracy. Tracy, by the time you're watching this, you're like, this girl's off a rocker. I really am now just, I'm quite giddy now because I'm having so much fun. So Tracy, no, beetroot, so high in sugar, okay? So high in sugar. Well, step away from the beetroot, Tracy. If you're in my 12-month program and you want a, a wee shot of beetroot juice as a pre-workout, absolutely perfect. Four-week shred, not allowed. Carbs, hit class and spinning class, no, Tracy, I explained that in the download. Nothing that is going to spike cortisol levels, okay? This is an anti-inflammatory program. You're going to be getting enough inflammation in the gym and from dieting. We want to reduce the inflammation in your body. We want to reduce the cortisol in your body. Hit classes and spinning will boost those through the roof, okay? You do not want to do that. So just stick with the cardio. You, okay, everybody say it with me. That's in the plan, okay? Stick with the cardio that's in the plan. Stick with the food that's in the plan. Stick with the training that's in the plan. Stick with the supplements that are in the plan. Get it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Tracy's saying, I was waiting for that. <laughs> Me sticking my, banging my head off the wall. Stace is saying, Mama Kim, ultra smackdown. Uh, Liga is saying, working the abs already. Yes, me too. Pissing myself laughing here. Kathy is saying, oh my God, I love you. Be my best friend. Yes, totally, I will. Gorgeous new office. Thank you. Isn't my office amazing? I love it. Like, I literally have my wee shrine. I like my incense and all my candles. I sit here and I like my candles and everything. I'm like, I feel like I've come home. My friend said to me, and she always used to come practice yoga here with me, because this was my yoga studio. And she said, love your new office. I was like, 
I feel like I've come home. This was like my special room. It always has been. This is my yoga studio. It's where I used to heal people. It's where I used to do like Thai yoga massage. And like I had the most beautiful experiences in this room. And it pained me to not use it. And I was like, I'm going to turn it into my office. I feel like I've come home. You've no idea. I, I, my day has been, I have been like this all day, like totally on an energy high. And I know that it's from coming back into this room. Uh, Christina is saying, that's in the plan. Yes, Christina, you're right. Okay, so let's get on with the questions here. Uh, I'm going to read it. Desiree is asking, are we allowed tomatoes or carrots? I have tons in my garden. Desiree, if you're only watching this now, rewind. No, no carrots or tomatoes are allowed. Oh, oh, just repeat after me. If it's in the plan, it's allowed. If it's not in the plan, walk away. <laughs> She's saying, I'm thinking not either. Hilarious, you guys. And Stace is saying, no, they aren't green conservative vegetables. Okay, Sarah Ann is saying, what's the best way to calculate measurements for your meals based on your caloric goal? So... Sarah, we don't worry about calories. <laughs> no calories. Don't worry about the calories, okay? Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Sarah, um, I'm just having a wee, a wee bit of fun with you. So if you back up, Sarah, halfway through this video, I did you a whole um, a whole My Fitness Pal uh, smackdown. So, and I'm actually going to post a video as well of how to use it. So what you want to do with the My Fitness Pal is you want to, as you're saying, no, I know. Sorry, Desiree is saying, no, I know. I know you do. I literally was totally having fun with you. I'm just having so much fun because everybody always wants to know, can they eat different things that aren't in the plan? Um, and I really am having so much fun. But no, I'm not laughing at anybody, just to really clarify, guys. Like, I'm really laughing with you. I want you to, I want you to have this. I want you to be fun. I want you to have fun with this, okay? Because I am someone who does not take anything too seriously, ever. Like, even if you're on a really, really, really hard plan, I want you to laugh, right? I want you to laugh. I want you to have the best time of your life, even while you're crying on the treadmill. I want you to know that you could laugh, right? So I'm always laughing, not with you. Um, I'm always laughing, not at you, but with you. So um, what's the best way to calculate measurements for your meals based on your caloric goal? Uh, weigh everything, Sarah, okay, so weigh everything, Every, the scale will be your best friend, keep a set of scales in your kitchen, weigh everything, measure everything, do never eyeball anything, weigh your tofu, weigh your, um, well, your beans, weigh your sweet potato, weigh everything, right, that's the, be really anal for a couple of weeks, right, really, really, really anal, and just, um, yeah, and, and, and that's that's the best way to do it. And always plan your protein first. So back up to where I showed you how to use my fitness pal. Plan your protein first and weigh everything. Okay, Hope. Hi, beautiful Kim. She might, she might not have called me beautiful if I give her a smackdown. Uh, hi, Hope. Uh, I have asked in this group, but I figured I could have the privilege of asking you directly. Yay, of course. Um, are we able to swim for our cardio at least once or twice per week? I am referring to a lap pull or ocean swim. I was a triathlete and it's my favorite form of cardio. Thank you. You know, hope again. I'm gonna I'm gonna refer back to my earlier comments of you can do whatever you want. I am not a swimmer. I am like a, a drowning octopus in the water. So definitely, I mean, I can swim, but it really is not my favorite thing to do. Hair extensions, hello. Eyelash extensions, hello. Chlorine, no. So do not like to swim. Um, my husband loves swimming for cardio. I would. The reason why I I want you to stick with the cardio that's on the plan is because walking outside and walking on a, a Stairmaster, especially, right? Now, look, I have a Stairmaster in my office. I'm going to turn around and show you, okay? Look, look at that bad boy. I have a Stairmaster in my office because, you know, whenever I feel inspired to do my cardio, I just hop on my Stairmaster. So you sweat and you get your heart rate up. And I'm not saying that you don't in the water, you don't sweat in the water, okay? But I do know that there are benefits to swimming, such as whenever you're, especially in an ocean swim and you're, and you're cold, your body has to work very, very, very hard to stay warm. I remember Michael Phelps, they're hearing a story about Michael Phelps saying that he had like 10,000 calories a day. And the reason why he was able to eat 10,000 calories a day was because of whenever you're in the water a lot and your body has to stay cool, your body has to stay warm, it triggers your shiver mechanism and your shiver mechanism raises your metabolism and causes you to burn fat. So um, I, I am going to say I would love for you to just stick to the plan because if you don't stick to the plan, I can't guarantee your results. Um, however, as a triathlete who loves swimming and, you know, if, okay, there's two things I want to say. I, 
of course you can do it if you want. I can't recommend that you do it because I really would love for you to just stick to the plan. But of course, it's your life and you know your body best. The other thing I was going to say was if you're used to swimming, then it's better to not swim. It's better to switch up your cardio and do something else. Because if you're used to swimming, your body will have uh, developed an equilibrium. Okay. So your body will have um, developed like, some, like a, uh, a way of coping with the swim, if you like. So it won't trigger it to do something different. Whereas if you do something different and you switch up your cardio and you do like, you know, walking or treadmill or, um, you know, the, the Stairmaster is the king of fat loss, by the way. But anyone who, if you have access to a Stairmaster, that is the king of fat loss, far better than walking. But not everybody has access to one. So it'll trigger your metabolism to work faster and harder and it'll, um, it'll make you burn more fat. So it's better to do the cardio on the plan. But of course, if you love swimming and you're really good at it and you think you learn burn loads of fat, then that's perfect. Amy is asking, do I weigh beans before or after I cook them? After. Um, I don't I don't know why I don't know this. Yeah, it's one of those weird things. You're like, why do I not know this? Well, because no one ever told you and you never asked. So uh, you don't know until you know, Amy. Or just buy them in a can. You can just buy them in a can. Absolutely, 100%. It makes it easier. Like, don't make things harder for yourself. This is going to be a hard couple of weeks anyway. So, like, seriously, people are like, no, I always soak and cook my own beans. Do I? I love soaking and cooking my own beans. Do I always do it? No, I just buy a can. So if your budget allows and it's easier for you, just buy them canned, 100%. Right, so we're getting close to the end. Cass is saying, I'm on a tight budget. What are the must-have supplements? Ooh, that's a good one. Okay. So Cass, um, everything is really a must-have supplement. I, a supplement, I didn't actually, I mean, the supplement list isn't actually that big, I can tell you. But if you really were pushed, uh, the most important ones are elution, L-glutamine, L-citrulline. I'm only going to give you three. If you really push, those are the most important ones, okay? You can leave out the creatine. You can leave out the apple cider vinegar. You can leave out, I'm trying to think, the BCAA. It's a hard one, okay? So here's, I'm going to give you a wee caveat, right? So the BCAA, it's also important. Um, so those four, okay? I, I can't really decide. l -Lucian, if you can only buy one, l -Lucian. If you could buy two, okay, I'm going to change it around. If you could buy two, Aleutian and BCAA, right? If you can buy three, Aleutian, BCAA, and glutamine, okay? Oh, glutamine, really good for muscle repair, really good for gut repair, really good for um, anti-inflammatory. Anyone with any kind of Crohn's disease, IBS, leaky gut, L-glutamine is your supplement, okay? Um, and then fourth, L-citrulline, because it's really, really good for recovery um, and for keeping your cortisol levels low and for um, anti-inflammatory properties whenever you're on your day off, right? So those are your most important four. So from the top down. Uh, if you can't, if you could only afford to buy one, buy the Aleutian and add it to your water in the morning instead of the BCAA. It's not a, it's not rec ideal, but it, it would be fine. Okay. Um, Varsha is asking, can we eat sprouted lentils and pulses? They have a lot of protein. Absolutely. hundred percent. You can. I know people who sprout sunflower seeds and then juice them. That's fine too. Interestingly, I didn't put it in the plan because, but it's only like a juice. It's not, you're not eating the fat, you're just extracting the juice. So um, that would be okay too for a wee shot of protein if you wanted it. What supplements are the must-haves and where do you get them from? Varsha asked, well, they are Varsha. I get most of mine from the Protein Works, but they don't have vegan BCAA and they don't have vegan acetylene, I think. So those ones I get from my protein because they have them in vegan. Um, and Linda uh, Richards is asking, I can't take most of the supplements due to having had thyroid cancer. What are my other options? I don't know, Linda, I'm sorry. I can't, um, I can't advise you. I'm, I don't know anything about thyroid cancer or um, what supplements will affect it or not affect it. So, I mean, my advice would be just leave them out. That seems to be, you know, you, you never want to affect anything that has been like a health issue like that uh, at all. So 100% just leave them out. No problem at all. Just do what you can and just leave them out. And Christina is asking here in the comments, this is hilarious. She wrote, she wrote Allah and I was like, Allah? It's like, is somebody being offended? Like, are they, like, because I was like, is I blasphemy or blaspheming or something? I realized, oh, she means, oh, it's ALA. It's not Allah. I thought she was like, praise be to Allah. Um, so no, ALA, alpha lipoic acid. Yeah, it's good, but to be honest, I would rather protect your muscle than burn your fat, <laughs> is the honest to God's truth. So even though this is a fat burning program, the more muscle you have, the more you will um, 
the more you protect your muscle, the more you, you repair your muscle, the less sore you're going to be, the harder you're going to be able to work. So yet, will ALA like help you to shuttle more nutrients into um, muscle instead of fat? Yes. Will the L-carnitine? Yes. But if you are so sore and tired that you can't move the next day, then that's going to hinder your progress more than not taking ALA or L-carnitine. So I would rather see you take the ones that protect your muscles and protect your body and stop it from getting stressed than the ones that burn fat. But you're going to be burning fat anyway from your reduced calories and your increased cardio. That's just helping you along. So um, like I was saying, I went for a trial 30-minute walk this morning and I did walk very, very briskly and my Fitbit showed a heart rate of 115 plus. Couldn't get it up to 130. When I walk on a treadmill at the gym, I can get to 130. Yeah, a big hill like it is what you want to do. Like if, you know, it's funny because I was talking to my trainer, Mark, today and this is us finished now. So um, I think my friend has actually arrived. So, um, and he said to me that I was laughing at some of the questions I was getting, like, you know, can I, you know, can I walk, you know, um, I, I walk, you know, I walk my kids to the, to the corner shop, um, you know, for 10 minutes, you know, can, can I count that as part of my cardio if I walk to the corner shop and walk back? And Mark was laughing and he said, well, whenever I, I'm bringing Mark in here for Q&A next week, by the way, Mark is my trainer, and my prep coach, and he's coming in for a Q&A next week. But anyway, Mark laughed and he said, whenever I prep people and I write their cardio, I call it scheduled cardio. And I was like, oh, scheduled cardio, I like that. I said, I'm going to steal that. He said, um, I've never even noticed that he's written that on my preps. He said, yeah. He said, if you just say cardio, people think, oh, yeah, I took the dog for a wee dander there, that's cardio. But scheduled cardio means we're going for a walk. So like, what you want to do is try and find a big, big hill. If you can, big hill, walk up. It's going to make you work harder. It's going to push your heart rate up. Um, yeah, walk really briskly or, or get a, find a big hill. Or get on a treadmill if you can. Do you guys know that you can hire a treadmill for like 10 bucks a week? Here in Belfast, I can hire a treadmill, I think, for 12 pounds a week. One of our members who is entering the final phase of the 12 months called the vegan program, which is the Shred, bought a treadmill for the house on eBay for 150 pounds. Now, that may not be in your budget, but let me tell you, if you, you can buy it and then sell it again after the four-week Shred. And if you bought it for 150 and sold it for 100 it only cost you 50 quid. So you can consider a treadmill. I always... Well, I have my Stairmaster, but when I didn't, I used to hire a treadmill for my preps, and I used to be on the treadmill every single day. Uh, okay. Oh, <laughs> you're Claire. My friend is texting me, and she's saying, I'm here. Come on up. I'm finishing my Q&A. So if I remember the friend I was telling you about that used to come for yoga all the time, I'm actually live, so you're live in my Q&A now. You're so late. Come and say hello. Uh, this is my friend who used to come for Q&A, and she's um, one of my best friends, so come and say hello. This is Claire. Hello. So she's come over to borrow my tripod for um, to record some yoga videos, I think. So um, now I'm going to go, guys. This was amazing. I went on really, really late. Didn't even realize the time. Um, guys, if you have any questions about calculations or protein or anything, please post them in the group. I hope this was helpful. We're going to do another Q&A. We're going to do a Q&A every single week of the program. We'll do another one next Monday night. Um, this seems to be a good time for people. And uh, if you have any questions, tag Stace or Susan in the group. And tag me, of course, but I'm very rarely in there. And have a wonderful week. And thank you so much for your questions. And this was great. And I will see you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye. I really like your outfits. Yes, they're amazing. It's really amazing. No, I had to put those really lights nice there because... The yeah, well, I had to put the lights there because... Um, the lights there is actually really... Well, no, I need to just put them there now for this to do I the video. Really still, they're not like lights that would be like if you had them in the ceiling. So it's actually rather nice. But I know whenever you're not working, you'll probably just... I feel like I, but uh, let me go into, hang on, I was recording that, I need to go into the Camtasia now, and then view, exit, full screen, I didn't even realize the time, Camtasia, start recording.